Welcome to Success From Scratch, your place for innovation, creativity, and the blueprint of success from peak performers just like you. Welcome to Success From Scratch, episode number 45, and my special guest, Marty Zolke from the Austin Market. Marty, welcome. Hi, how you doing, Mark? Doing awesome, and the Z team. I'm glad to, to hear you. Uh, you drove up today. Traffic issues getting here? Yeah, just um, 35 was closed like it yeah. usually is somewhere. Yeah. And only this time it got me. But, uh, well, mental toughness is staying in inspired action and staying on task, even though the circumstances surround you uh, uh, get, get thrown at you. So I'm glad you came up. Normally we do Austin by Zoom, but I know we have a couple meetings uh, together over the next Great. couple days, so I'm glad you're here in person. Yeah, I had an opportunity to, to do it this time. I don't often get an opportunity to just yeah. run up to Dallas and back. But, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, so tell us a little bit about your history. You have an amazing history and a successful uh, team called the Z Team. Before real estate, uh, what, what did you do? Um, I was a, a law clerk for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. uh, after that, I went into... Um, uh, utility, power utility company, right. and immediately I was uh, involved in lining up properties and, and the, uh, the jobs and the materials, but along with that for the crews was I had to make sure they had the rights to go in where they needed to go right. and um, other, other real estate items, which that led me into the real estate department for the utility. Right. which eventually led me into managing the real estate department. And that meant um, some interesting things. When you're a power utility, your budgets that you prepare are um, pretty precise for 100 years out. Wow. And you have, so that's a long term. Yeah. Well, yeah, you have, you have your short term, long term, but you plan out 100 years and you plan back wow. to build to that 100 years because you've got to get out way ahead yeah. of the uh, development of, of the uh, cities that you're around. Yeah. So that was very interesting. We had a huge portfolio. Um, I spent my earliest part of that time doing mostly farm and ranch, mm -hmm. uh, putting together large parcels for power plants, substations, right. that kind of thing. Um, and did that start your, your kind of love for real estate? Yeah, I did. I mean, I always had a, a strong interest there. Right. So, um, and I loved um, putting things together. It's kind of a puzzle, you know, yeah. and, um, and it was very detail oriented. And with my, uh, my uh, legal training, that kind of helped with the right. contracts. Right. Um, it, it was just, it was fun for a long time. Um, when I became the manager, the portfolio included all kinds of properties we had to manage right. that we had acquired, we were holding for future use. We had uh, Irish bars that I had problems with on St. Patrick's Day I uh, had to manage. I had barber shops. I had uh, nuclear medicine laboratories that right. got interesting when we had to move one. Um, so involved a, quite, a, quite a few things. Yeah. From there, I uh, branched out. Uh, took a position with an A&E firm and was running the West Coast right. on the, the real estate side. So uh, that, that was... Uh, and I think that's where the travel came in. You had a lot of travel and you're on the road all the yeah, time. And that kind of led you to your own business, yeah, right? From, yeah, from there, quickly, from there I, I got a, a pretty good reputation and um, a large uh, utility company um, in Austin doing fiber optics nationwide. Right. Um, I had some experience working some, some consulting for them. And right. so after about a year of um, recruiting, they finally talked me into coming to Austin and taking over the project, uh, building out the country. So we had sites and all kinds of things going on. Yeah. So that, uh, plus some other jobs I had in consulting, has put me in physically on the ground working contracts in 46 states in the U.S. Wow. And, uh, and a couple other countries as well. So, yeah. so doing 
all kinds of crazy things like yeah. selling power plants and yeah. buying airports and so commercial then is really your kind of expertise and how did you how did you transition out of corporate America into kind of commercial real estate well a couple of the projects I had uh, as I bounced around different companies um, uh, was acquiring a couple times uh, 30 homes at one time right you know it was about buying neighborhoods and then relocating them and so that was my taste for residential and I found that was much more satisfying mm -hmm. solving the issues for these people that we had to relocate and making it a win for everybody mm -hmm. so that kind of got me thinking that residential seemed to be just a little more appealing mm -hmm. than straight commercial so over time I uh, had a mentor that finally convinced me to quit working for other people right. and go into business for myself um, and uh, mentored me on residential, right. one at a time deals instead of 30. Right. And uh, from there, um, it just blossomed. Eventually, people got hold of me that knew I did commercial, and I slowly got pulled back into doing some right. commercial. Right. So you do kind of a, a, a hybrid, some, some of each? Right, I've done farms and ranches and commercial and primarily residential. Right. I built a, a pretty big customer database um, and eventually it was more than I could serve as well as I'd like to. So right. that's when I decided I have to give up or get a team. Right. Um, so when I came to Austin, I had over 100 agents working around the country. Right. Um, when I became an uh, independent realtor, it was just me, and that right. was very refreshing. Right. But now I'm back with a team, but it's not 100. Yeah. So, so how many on your team, and tell us how the team developed. Uh, I have five others on the team mm -hmm. at this time. We may be adding another, we'll see. Right. Um, and so I decided I, I need a team. Yeah. And the broker I was with at that time, I, I said, keep an eye open. I'd like to talk to whoever thinks they want to be on a team. Right. And I took some courses on leading a team. Right. Eventually, uh, kind of out of the blue, one of the first people that contacted me was my son-in-law who owned uh, a uh, high-end landscaping design. Right. And out of the blue, he said, you know, I've always wanted to do real estate. Would you take me on your team? So uh, he was first, got some others, and now uh, he's done uh, very well. Yeah. He's, my, he's my lieutenant. He's, yeah. yeah, so. Well, so tell us about the dynamics of the team. Uh, what? Uh, do, do you meet weekly? Do you have uh, standards? Uh, tell, tell us a little bit about the structure of the team and how you've... Well, the structure of the team as it is right now is uh, we have a five to ten minute call, huddle call on Mondays, mm -hmm. late morning after people have been able to deal with whatever came over the weekend that right. they had to. And we do a quick check with everybody. Right. You know. Anything we need to help you with, anything you found we need to know about, right. uh, does anybody need to set up a hard appointment to talk with me or one of the other teammates right. during the week? So we keep that to five to ten minutes right. and take things offline if we have to. Yeah. So rapid moving, fast pace. Right. Yep. Just a quick hello. How was yep. your weekend? You know, what, what do you, does anybody have anything yep. that you need or that you want to offer? Um, and then we uh, we do quite a few customer appreciation events. Mm. Probably more than average. Okay. So we meet at those events. Right. Uh, we use that as a meeting. And when there's been a a gap in the schedule for those will meet, but we don't meet that often all in one room as a team. 
Right. But you do that around your customer appreciation events, and pretty much, and you do that pretty. I know I've been invited to a few of them. They're, they're pretty extensive. Yeah, we uh, we have a blast. Um, people, um, I wanted to create a community between our age, my agents, our agents, and our our clients and our vendors. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, we're well on our way of doing that. So, right. you know, my clients meet the other teammates' clients, and then next thing you know, they're out doing things and right. for the vendors. So it's it's uh, fun when we have an event yeah. and people have a good time. And I want wanted people to differentiate Z-Team. When they saw the name Z-Team, two things would come to mind. Uh, Top-notch service, mm -hmm. quick responses, and the other thing is fun. It's oh. fun to work with Z Team, so that's kind of what. So top-notch service, productivity, and 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 fun. Yeah. Now I know outside of real estate, you you do a lot of fun things both in the music community and uh, the the uh, growing uh, community. Tell us a little bit about that. Right. Um, so I've been involved in rowing for quite some time. I was um, at times a coach for the Olympic Committee mm -hmm. for rowing. Um, and I'm uh, presently the head coach for St. Edwards University's rowing team in, um, in Austin. Awesome. Um, which works well for my real estate business because we meet at 5 a.m. and we're done by 7. Right. And there's very few clients I've ever uh, been requested to meet at 5 a.m. <laughs> 5 to 7. <laughs> yeah. So, so I know Chris was up at 3.30 this morning. He had to do a Fox News set. Oh. He, he's been up quite a bit. You know, my, my daily routine is up at 4.15 right. and then uh, grab something quick to eat, head down the lake, um, conduct practice, head back, have, have a cup of tea and get my real estate going. And then you're off, off to your real estate. Awesome. Right. And then um, every, uh, back of that up a little bit, um, most mornings I do do um, a few minutes, 20 minutes, half hour, um, practice on my cello. Mm -hmm. And then in the evening I'm back on the cello. So I put right. in a couple of hours a day yeah. um, practicing my cello. Yeah. I'm in the... Uh, a um, member of the Austin Cello Choir. Yeah. There's a few cities in the world that have cello choirs, which are a lot of fun. Cellos cover the broadest range of, uh, uh, of the scales, um, yeah. other than piano maybe. So uh, we have 24 cellos in our choir, yeah. and we can sound like a complete orchestra. Oh, that's amazing. You know what I love about this story, Marty, is you know so many of us in real estate think it's 24/7, and all we have to do is work, work, work. And you've developed in your success uh, an amazing to, way to be successful in your business, but also have a rich personal life with the, the cello and rowing, and uh, you know it, it just has to feel amazing for you. Yes, uh, a lot of times I I bounce between wondering how do I really get this done. Right. Uh, and a lot of times I think I could be doing more and I'm planning on doing more this year, getting yeah. more in. So you just have to be motivated in all those directions and it'll happen. Yeah. I also learned from years ago from training for rowing and other sports that I can, when I get in good enough shape, I can train myself that four hours good sleep is plenty. So that kind of helps me get all this yeah. stuff in yeah. because I still do about anywhere from 60, 70 hours a week on the real estate. Yeah. So, so that's, that's, that's a pretty heavy schedule mm -hmm. and have the other, yeah. have the energy to do the other things. But you said you want to do more. Tell us about that. Well, I've um, uh, had some art shows in the past and I'd yeah. like to get another art show together. Yeah. And I've been uh, published poet and right. short stories. So uh, that's this year I want to get my writing, catch my writing back up. Yeah. It's been a while. Yeah. So there we have it. You can have a real estate business and still have uh, these other um, amazing things in your life. You need to have a life yeah. besides real estate or you don't last long. We say that you get burned out and those kind of things. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So as we wrap up, what um, 
what would you leave the audience with, you know, one or two thoughts uh, of your success that might help them? Well, I think I, I, I go back to my roots, back to my childhood, and I had a father who uh, was very strict and very hands-on. Mm -hmm. um, so at a very early age, he taught us that you have a brain, use it. If something's broken or you need to create something, you can figure it out. Right. You know, take it apart, put it back together, see how things work. Get your hands dirty, get involved, and work. Right. And I had a mother that somehow instilled in me that I also had a brain that if I put my mind to whatever I want to do, I can do it. Mm -hmm. So I've been you know, raised with the idea that whatever I think I can do, I can do. Yeah. I think um, Henry Ford, uh, go back to Henry Ford, quote, years and years ago, I heard when I was in elementary school, and he said that uh, if you think you can or can't, you're right. Either way, you're right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's exactly what he's there. So I've kind of lived that way. Um, yeah. You know, when I thought, I think I can play the cello, I didn't listen yeah. to people who say, you're too old. That's yeah. the second hardest instrument. Right. I just thought I could, and I'm doing it. So. Yeah. Well, congratulations on your success, and we'll see you soon on another episode of Success from Scratch. <laughs>